In this video, I'll guide you through the process of performing internal email migrations between two hosting or accounts. An internal email migration essentially involves transferring email backups from one hosting or account to another without losing data and files stored within these folders. To easily differentiate between these hosting accounts, account A, which serves as the source account for the email migrations, is logged into an incognito browser. The normal browser, on the other hand, is the destination account I intend to make the email migrations to. I'll assume you are here because you're considering performing a complete internal website migration and probably already know how to go about migrating the website. So, this would be your complete guide to conveniently migrate emails stored within the source Hostinger account to your desired account. Now, there is a rule of thumb we all need to be aware of before migrating these emails. First, it's important to note that a domain, for example, in my case, victorchinedu.com, cannot be hosted on two separate accounts simultaneously. This implies that we can only have this domain hosted on one hosting or account at any given time. So, if there's ever a need to move this domain to another hosting or account, we must first delete the domain from its current account before adding it to another hosting or account for use. So how can we address this issue without losing our emails in the process? Now here's the blueprint for the steps we intend to take from here on out. Step 1. We want to add a non-existent domain to the destination hosting or account. This option is for those who have a single domain containing the emails but don't know how to proceed with the email migrations without buying another domain. For those who have an existing domain they wish to migrate to, this shouldn't be much of a problem. Step 2. After successfully adding the domain to the destination hosting or account, we'll proceed to create a temporary email address on this domain. This step is crucial in allowing us to safely migrate the emails from the source account to the destination account without deleting the domain. Step 3. Upon migration, we'll proceed to delete the domain from the previous hosting account before adding it to the destination account. Lastly, we'll complete the migration process by migrating the emails back from the temporary email account to the original email account associated with the source domain. I just wanted to paint us a picture of what we'll be doing so it becomes clearer as we proceed through each step. So, let's get started. The first step involves us adding a domain to the destination account. So let's navigate to Websites and proceed with adding a new site. This process is pretty basic, so I'll just click through to the crucial part. At this stage of the domain and website setup process, let's choose the option to use an existing domain. For those who don't have a domain for this process, simply input a domain name that goes like this. I'll add my first name, followed by a dot, followed by a random word, followed by a dot com. Click on Continue till the setup goes through and loads up this interface and now we have our website up and ready to go. Please note that this isn't a valid domain, as it's solely improvised to facilitate this email migration. Now that we've created our supposed domain for the email migration, let's proceed to the second step, which involves us creating a temporary business email address. So I'll return to my account's dashboard and navigate to emails. You may have noticed that the email account on this hosting is powered by Titan, and I had to mention that because as we progress further, this interface might be slightly different for those using Hostinger's webmail. Also, I'll assume you are not new to creating an email address on Hostinger, so pardon me as I speed through this. Something I always like to do is to ensure that the email prefix matches that of the source email prefix. This helps prevent any mix-up with identifying which emails belong to which, especially in cases where I might be required to make bulk email migrations. Now that we've created our temporary business email address, let's return to emails using the menu navigation link. Then, click on Manage for the destination email address we just created. Once we are within Titan's email manager, let's proceed by selecting Import Email Data. For those whose emails are managed by Hostinger's webmail, let's repeat the same by navigating from Emails to Managing the Destination Email Address. And to the left, click on Email Import. Whether your site is managed by Hostinger's webmail or Titan, just click the Import Request button. I'll first guide us through the migration process using Titan's email service provider, and later on move over to that powered with Hostinger's webmail. To reiterate, this is our destination email account. Now we need to obtain the IMAP server configuration settings for the source email account to successfully carry out the email migration. So let's switch to the browser that the source email account is set up and navigate to Emails. Then select the Manage button. From here, open up the Configure Desktop apps, and we should be able to find the IMAP configuration settings right here. 
So let's copy this for the incoming server and paste that here. To those with email addresses hosted on Hostinger's webmail, you can find these settings within Connect Apps and Devices, and this would be what you need for the IMAPS incoming server. Heading back to Titan's interface, I'll leave this set to Yes. The next field is usually predefined, but if that's not the case for you, just head back to the configuration settings, and this should be the IMAPS port number. The next field requires that we fill in the source email address, and underneath, the password used when creating the business mail. Lastly, we are required to select the import destination email, which in this case is our temporary email address. I'll skip the field for alternate email for notification and proceed to submit my request. Once submitted, and the import process begins, you can check its progress status here, which should first display import will begin shortly, and upon completion, changes to import completed successfully. Now we can go ahead to confirm if the emails have been successfully migrated by logging into the destination email address. Once logged in, the first mail you find here should be a success message of the import from the source email to the destination email address. For those whose emails are hosted with Hostinger's webmail, the migration process is just as easy as that of Titan's. Let's begin by clicking the New Email Import Request button. Then, proceed to the next step by selecting this button. And just as we did with Titan, let's fill out these fields. This is for the source email address. This for the password used when creating the email address. And lastly, fill in the IMAP server configuration URL corresponding to the source account. Once you are done, click the Next Step button. Let's choose our destination email address and input its password. Then proceed to the next step. I actually like this interface better when compared to Titans, as we get a preview of the task we are about to process, and if there are any omissions made, you can easily click on one of these icons to make those edits. I believe I've filled in my credentials correctly, so I'll proceed to start the import. Now we have to wait for it to complete the process, after which we can confirm the migration was successful by logging into the webmail account. And that wraps it up for the second step of the migration process to the destination email address. Now let's proceed with the third step which involves deleting the domain from the current hosting account before adding it to the destination account. Removing and adding a domain to a new hosting or account should be relatively easy, so I'll run through that while I speed through the video a little for those who might still want to follow through with each step. Now that we have our domain migrated over to where we ultimately want it, let's move on to the last step, which involves creating the business email address on this domain. This will be followed by repeating the same migration process as we did earlier, only this time we'll be migrating the emails back to their source. Upon getting to this stage, there's every chance you'll encounter this error message, and it only makes sense because the email account is still set up on the previous hosting. And because I could not find a guide to remove the account from the previous hosting, I had to reach out to customer care for assistance. After speaking with Salsa for a few minutes, she offered to help, and that's how I got that deleted. Following this, I proceeded with creating the business email on the destination Hostinger account. Once the email is created, let's duplicate this tab. The first tab should take us to the configuration settings for our temporary email service provider, since the source and destination accounts are now reversed. For those using Hostinger's webmail, head over to Connect Apps and Devices. I believe at this point we should all be familiar with the migration process. So let's open the second tab and proceed to create an email address for the main domain if you haven't done so already. Once that has been created, let's head back to Titan's email management interface to select Import Email Data. Now instead of repeating this entire process all over again, all we need to do is use the IMAP configuration setting for the same account we have the temporary email address. For the remote email and password fields, this should also be the information relating to the temporary email we created earlier. Now choose the destination email address, which has been the source email address from the start, and then proceed to submit the request. I doubt there's any point in repeating this with Hostinger's webmail, as we've gone through this process already. I only repeated that with Titan so we can get the gist of the entire migration circle, which starts from the source email address to the temporary address, and then back to the source when the domain has been moved to the destination Hostinger account. So if you have questions or need clarity at any point, especially with the reverse migration, please leave your questions in the comments and I promise to answer every one of them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.